What's up y'all? Pre-med up here. So I've made a previous video detailing my final month MCAT study plan, but I understand a lot of y'all aren't in that final month quite yet. You may be earlier in your study cycle, or you may be just prepping and trying to figure out, okay, how do I actually approach the MCAT? So in this video, I'm gonna give you my recommendations on how you should spend each day studying for the MCAT. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this video and how you guys are prepping for the MCAT. First things first, how do I actually view this monumental exam that is the MCAT? Well, the MCAT is structured in a way to test your inference skills, but in order to actually infer, you have to have a solid background info um, or, or a solid foundation. So the two factors that the MCAT basically boils down to is, are your ability to infer and how, how much background info you actually have. Now, certain people may focus strictly on their ability to infer and focus on how to actually think like the test creators want you to think, or other people may focus on the, just the amount of background info they have. So they try to memorize as many things as possible. So when you're actually taking the exam, you don't have to do any of the inferring because you know the answer to the question based strictly off of recall. Now, those are two extremes. Ideally, you want to use both of them. Now, some people will be able to infer more than others, while others have uh, stronger recall skills, but they work in tandem to provide you with the best chance to do well on your exam. Now that we have the two factors, building background information and then your ability to infer. Next question is, how do I actually increase these factors? Well. How you increase these factors and improve upon these factors and what you do on the daily to improve your MCAT score depends on what stage of studying you're in. Now, there are three main stages when you're studying for the MCAT. The first is you're building background information. The second is you're integrating that information into your head, making it stick. And then the third is you're seeing, you're understanding how the test asks for particular bits of information and then adapting accordingly. Now, irrespective of how long you're studying for this exam, how many months you're studying, every person has to go through these three stages ultimately. If you're studying for shorter, you for a shorter amount of time, you may have to merge a couple of these stages to get to your desired end goal, right? But Irrespective of whether you're studying for a month or studying for six months, I really, really recommend to set aside at least seven hours a day prepping for this exam. Treat this exam like a full-time job. Set aside time to study so you can focus intensely, but also set aside time for your mental health and your mental well-being. Because if you, if you physically and if your overall well-being is decreased while studying for this exam, it's gonna be detrimental to your actual score and your actual performance. Building background info phase. What are you actually doing? Simply put, you're reading the information, converting that information into your own words, and then converting those words into a method that will allow you to actively review the information for the duration of your study period up until you take the MCAT. I personally read through Kaplan books while taking notes, and then later turn those notes into flashcards. Um, I also try to get through at least two chapters in a particular Kaplan book a day. I, I, like, I prefer Kaplan over Princeton Review because the Kaplan books themselves are sim have similar chapters, a um, similar number of chapters, which makes um, prepping for the MCAT are, are creating the study schedule a lot easier. However, if you have a shorter time period, then I would recommend instead of actually taking handwritten notes, essentially making your flashcards your notes. So as you're reading, you're creating flashcards in your own words based off of the information that you're reading. Um, the reason why you create flashcards or create, or you have a method by which 
you are able to review actively is because once you get past this stage, you don't want to touch your books again to, to have to implement passive learning methods until you're at the final stage of your prep, which is actually taking as many practice MCATs as possible. As far as how much time you're spending each day doing a particular particular book or particular subject, it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, you could split, if you say you have eight hours, you could split the first four into reading particular subjects and then the last four into turning those notes into active flat, active um, learning methods via flashcards. Or you could split in it, or you could say, okay, I'm gonna spend two hours on a particular subject, taking notes and, and creating flashcards, move over to another two hours for a different subject, um, another two hours and then another two hours. It doesn't necessarily matter how you approach it, whether you hop through subjects or whether you go and, and kind of finish a book at a time. What really, really matters is that you, one, you're actively and it, you're actively reading the material and you're engaged with the material the entire time. You're taking high yield quality notes and you're able to turn those quality notes into high yield quality flashcards. Those three things are the most important. It doesn't matter how you get to that end goal, but you have to get to that end goal in a reasonable amount of time. Now, the second stage is integrating that information into your head. Now in this stage, whatever method, whatever active learning method that you decided to use, this is where you really delve into that. And you use that method to understand and comprehend the information and the topics on the MCAT more completely. You also use section banks in conjunction with your active learning strategies. And you use the section banks to better inform the flashcards or the questions that you're asking yourself while you're actively learning. So. Again, you do not want to really touch your books at all or, or, or read up on books unless there is a gaping hole that you, that you continually miss. Then you may need to read up and create better um, flashcards or better active learning methods um, by which you can use to shore up that gap in knowledge, right? But in this integration of, of info stage, you are, you, uh, a sample eight hour study schedule, you could say, okay, you're gonna split up the information, you're gonna split up how you study into two hour increments, right? Because each part of the MCAT, each section of the MCAT takes about an hour and 30. And then in each of those two hour increments, you're only going to study a particular section of the MCAT. Say first, you're only gonna study um, the psych and social section. So in those two hours, you're first reviewing your, you're going through your active um, learning method, whether it's flashcards, you're going through your flashcards of that psych so, social section. And then you're using, you're then going through question banks of that, of that psych social section. And then you're using how you did on the question banks to then inform and improve upon your flashcards. So eventually at the end of this particular stage, you should be, you should, all your flashcards should be incredibly high yield. So you so you covered all the very, very, all the most important information in the best and most effective way. This stage, from from the time that you finished the last of the time that you finished the last of the reading and you've created your last created your last flashcards, and then you you've entered this stage up until about a month from your exam. This is where you're this is the integrating info stage. Additionally, during this stage, you may decide to take one or two practice MCATs just as a diagnostic check to see exactly where you are as a, um, when compared to where you want to be, right? So while you're, while you're integrating, while you're really going through these flashcards, while you're going through these study banks, um, I mean, section banks, you can then Take a, take a step back and take a practice time kind of say, okay, am I, are the questions and the, and the topics that I'm learning actually translating to the score that I want? If so, fantastic, keep doing that. If not, then you have to figure out, okay, which part of the actual exam am I faltering on? Which flashcards, which section bank should I focus on? And then hit those. So that's kind of, in a, that's, that's, a, that's a basic um, premise of 
this particular stage of the of your study prep. Now, the final stage is understanding how the exam actually works. Now, in this stage, the most important resources are your practice exams, your question banks, your active learning, um, active learning methods, whether it's flashcards or whatever active learning method you decide upon. And then finally, your test prep company books. Now, I've already created a video detailing this stage, and I'll post a link to that video in the description. However, a quick synopsis of this stage is as follows. First, you're taking one exam, you're taking an exam one day, and then you're spending the next day or two reviewing that exam. During those review days, you'll first start off by reviewing the exam, going question by question, trying to find areas of weakness or any particular areas of weakness. Right? Once you've pinpointed those areas, then you're going to create flashcards um, focusing on those areas or review the particular flashcards you already have created on those areas. So you're reviewing those flashcards. And then once you've gotten done with those with that review of flashcards, then you go over to the sec to section banks on those particular areas and you do section bank questions on those areas or any other areas which, which you may not feel the most um, secure on. And similar to the second stage, you're using those question banks to then inform your flashcards and improve upon the flashcards that you're making. And then you alternate from section banks to flashcards. And you alternate from those two up until the next, up until you take the next practice exam. Now, you repeat this process up until a week before your exam date. At that point, you stop taking practice exams. Instead, you focus on section banks and, um, and flashcards. Um, and then you also begin to create a routine to prep your body and your mind on how you're actually going to approach the, the big test day. Um, during this time, make sure to rest, make sure to, to, to improve your mind and get prepped mentally, get focused mentally just to absolutely destroy the exam and do amazingly on that actual test date. That's how I recommend approaching the MCAT and really prepping for it. Um, remember, three stages. First, you're building background info. You're integrating that information into your head. And then you're understanding how the test works and then adapting um, uh, respectively, right? If you're able to really do well at these three stages and continue to excel throughout by, by making high yield active learning um, tools and, and utilizing your exams effectively, you will really do well on this exam and you'll have nothing to worry about. Um, and again, quick note, you do not want to take your practice exam or to take your actual MCAT unless you're scoring at, unless you're averaging in the last three practice exams, the scores that you want, because you're not going to jump up that many points on your exam day. Just a, just a quick note, just need to get that out there. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, remember to like, subscribe, comment down below your thoughts on, on this video, your thoughts on, on your particular study uh, plan um, and any other questions or any video ideas that you would want me to do in the future. And I'll see y'all next time.